This is CBN News Watch. It is Good Friday, April 10. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. We begin this half hour with millions of Americans applying for unemployment. And our senior Washington correspondent, Jennifer Wishon, reporting from Washington. She's looking at the battle to rescue the economy and small businesses in the middle of the coronavirus crisis. In just three weeks, nearly 17 million Americans have filed for unemployment. In California, these people wait in the rain for food. It's terrible. As states struggle to keep up with the barrage of unemployment requests. How long it takes will vary by states. In Washington, Senate Republicans pushed for another $250 billion to help small businesses Thursday who desperately need it. We need more funding and we need it. Fast. But Democrats blocked the aid, demanding $250 billion more for health care providers and state and local governments. This was, in fact, designed to fail, designed as a political stunt. There's now fear the unemployment rate could hit 15 percent soon. And White House officials eager to stave off a severe recession say companies in certain parts of the country free from outbreaks could reopen in May. But the decision to reopen the economy is largely out of the federal government's hands, as many governors have issued stay-at-home orders through the end of May or later. We're at the top of the hill, pretty sure we're at the top of the hill, and now we're going uh, downward. In some cases, we've already started that process. Health officials say social isolation methods are working. Dr. Anthony Fauci now predicts the death toll will be 60,000, down from 100 to 240,000. Meanwhile, a bipartisan group of senators is calling on China to immediately close all wet markets where fresh meat is sold in unsanitary conditions. This after the director of the Chinese CDC said the origin of the new coronavirus is the wildlife sold illegally in a Wuhan seafood market. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. And medical reporter Lori Johnson joins us now. Let's begin with the task force news conference that we're seeing. We know that much of the discussion there was on when the country will be open. Any idea of a timetable? Well, they're talking about different timetables, but one thing they made perfectly clear, it's not going to be all at one time. It's not going to be the light switch. And President Trump wanted that because it's dramatic. It's celebratory. The country's back open, but it's not really going to be like that. They said it's going to be incremental, starting in places where there's very little to no spread of the coronavirus. And we're talking about small Midwestern cities, mountainous areas. And these numbers, the data from counties, are being closely watched by state health officials. The concern, Ephraim, is people are going to start venturing outside and then all of a sudden another resurgence of cases. So we have to be very careful. And health officials said it's not going to be like it was before. We're probably going to continue to social distance. So you go to a restaurant, there may be uh, restrictions about how many people you can have, only people every other table, every third table, movie theaters, every third or fourth seat, things like that. Mm -hmm. Testing is going to be a huge part of this moving forward, especially that antibody tests that shows you've already recovered. Those people, according to health officials, are immune. And do you know 25,000 people who contracted this, who tested positive, are now uh, recovered. Yeah, that's very good news. What's happening in the hot spots like New York and other places? Great news in New York City, although, of course, we see these terrible death tolls, but the hospital admissions have plummeted. We're talking about only 200 admissions this week. Last week, 1,400 admissions. Mm. So we're seeing a dramatic decrease in New York City. Meanwhile, Louisiana, about 40 percent of the people who were on ventilators have been taken off the ventilators and discharged. Mm. But we're watching very carefully some other hot spots that are emerging. Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and uh, also Baltimore. Mm. But the the attack rate, the, the penetration is much lower than we saw in New York City. The attack rate for these cities is one person out of every 1,000. In New York, it was seven out of 1,000. Oh, good news there for sure. Good news also with the latest death projections. What are we seeing? 60,000. The newest model says 60,000 deaths by August 9th. That was revised downward. It was 80,000 before. Before that, it was 90, 100, 200. And remember, 2.2 million if we were to do do nothing. So that's very encouraging. As more data comes in, those death rates are revised downward. And it's interesting to note, we're talking about 60,000 by August 9th. Two years ago, 
80,000 people in the United States died of the flu. That was a particularly harsh flu season, but we generally see between 20 and 50,000 people in the United States die from the flu. All right, Lori, thank you so much for that report, keeping sure. us updated. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. There will be no pilgrims flocking to holy sites this Easter, but our Chris Mitchell reports just because Israel is on lockdown, Christians can and are still celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is what Good Friday usually looks like on the Via Dolorosa, Latin for the way of suffering, where Christian pilgrims from all over the world come to retrace the steps of Jesus on his way to his crucifixion on the cross. This year on Good Friday, the Via Dolorosa here in the heart of Jerusalem will be empty since all outdoor processions have been canceled by the government because of COVID-19. Usually in such seasons, uh, the city is uh, overloaded with people. Now the roads are empty. We won't have practically any outdoor activity. All prayers will be held with very, very minimal participations. The same holds true here in the garden tomb, just outside the walls of Jerusalem's old city, where many people believe Jesus was laid in this empty tomb and then rose from the dead. The Garden Tomb Association has held Easter sunrise services for years, many of them broadcast by CBN. Normally there are thousands here on Easter morning, but this year we could only allow four people on camera at a time. Well, the Easter service we have planned now is going to be a mix of readings from some of the community who are still here, of prayers, of praying for those victims and those who are suffering with the virus. Abu Nasser says despite the circumstances, there's cause for hope. St. Paul says everything is working for the sake of those who love God. I believe that God and the divine wisdom might require us to reflect and to pray more. And I do believe that this is an opportunity for the families, especially nucleus families, to pray more, to reflect more. It will look very different to previous years, obviously because there are no people allowed to attend it. But we still believe that is still an act of worship to God because the ministry of the Garden Tomb is about a place of worship and witness and prayer. And that will continue even through this virus. Regardless of the government restrictions because of the coronavirus, Abu Nasser and Holland say the message of Easter remains the same. That we believe in resurrected Lord and death, even despite all difficulties, Easter reflects that life would prevail. The message of the gospel stays the same. And that message that the garden tombs proclaimed for 126 years, that Jesus died, that Jesus was buried, and that Jesus rose again for everyone who's listening to this message today and the whole world. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, The Garden Tomb and Via Dolorosa, Jerusalem. And Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell joins us now from the Holy Land on this Good Friday. Happy Easter to you, Chris. So why was the first night of Passover so different this year? Well, first of all, happy Easter to you, uh, Ephraim. Uh, it was very different than like any other Passover that I can see in or remember in, in memory. Many people say it was sort of like the first Passover because on Wednesday night when they had the beginning of uh, the uh, Passover and the Seder meal, there was a curfew here in Israel from 3 p.m. Wednesday, uh, Wednesday afternoon to 7 a.m. Uh, Thursday morning, and nobody could go anywhere, basically. The reason they did that was to protect people from spreading the virus, and usually on the Seder, there's families that get together, uh, grandparents, parents, children, and it's a very family uh, uh, ceremony that they get together, but they, that was uh, not happening this year. There was something very interesting, uh, Ephraim, there at 8.30, uh, all over Israel, people went on their balconies, they sang one of the songs uh, from, the, uh, from the Seder celebration, uh, and also many people had Zooms or Skypes or Messenger Seders, uh, but that's certainly not like the first one. What's it like there on today? Good Friday. Very quiet. Usually there are thousands of people here, uh, Ephraim, certainly on Holy Week. Uh, one of the shopkeepers told us not too long ago, really, you could hardly move in the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, many people retrace the steps of Jesus on the Via Dolorosa. That won't be happening today. In fact, but I, I'm going to hopefully right after this live show, go down, do a Facebook Live on the Via Dolorosa. So hopefully people can look at that on our uh, Jerusalem Dateline Facebook page. Mm, speaking of that, what else does CBN Jerusalem have planned for Easter Sunday? 
Well, as uh, as Simon Holland from the Garden Tomb Association mentioned, it's going to be a special Easter service, uh, unlike the other ones where thousands of people would come to the Garden Tomb. Uh, But we recorded it this week. There'll be worship, scripture readings, prayer for people affected by the coronavirus, a special Easter message, and people can see it on our Facebook page and CBN.com. What will we be seeing this week on Jerusalem Dateline? Well, a report on how the churches are handling this, also how the IDF is handling this and fighting COVID-19. Again, we're going to have a virtual tour of Israel, a special story on uh, on the uh, King Herod's palace where actually Jesus appeared before King Herod and uh, Pontius Pilate. That was discovered several years ago, a special report on that. And also how CBN Israel is helping many Israeli families affected financially by the coronavirus. Uh, So we have that as well as... uh, We'll be promoing this, uh, this special on Easter morning as well. So that's what we got planned uh, this, uh, this week on Jerusalem Dateline, Ephraim. Lots of great stuff to look forward to. Chris, thank you so much. I want to remind you at home that Jerusalem Dateline airs this evening at 930 Eastern. And of course, you can find that on the CBN News Channel. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams talked exclusively to CBN News about the role of faith in fighting COVID-19. I don't think it's a coincidence that this is happening at this time. During this week, we celebrate the ultimate sacrifice uh, that, that, uh, that was made for us. God sent his only son to die for us, and it was sad initially, but then we saw salvation at the end of it. And you can see more of this interview at CBNNews.com. We also have an exclusive interview with Vice President Mike Pence coming up. You can see it on the 700 Club on Monday. Our chief political analyst, David Brody, spoke with him about the road forward with America's coronavirus battle as it relates to everyday life, the economy, and faith. You can also get a sneak peek at that interview at CBNNews.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover Life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Several pastors and members of different faiths have come under fire in these days of stay-at-home mandates and social distancing. I'm Mark Martin talked with Todd Storns about how some of the cases, about some of the cases and what the bigger picture is with constitutional freedoms. Todd, give us an update on the case of Florida Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, who was arrested for holding services and not following the stay-at-home guidance. Yes, and let's set the record straight. This happened in Florida, in the United States of America, and not in Havana, Cuba, or Venezuela. A pastor on American soil getting arrested for preaching the gospel in a pulpit. Unbelievable. So look, uh, here's the latest. Uh, We raised a a big stink about this on my radio show and also my website, toddsterns.com. And quite frankly, I believe that the person who should have been arrested was the sheriff of Hillsborough County in Tampa, Florida. 
Well, the good news here is that the pastor, or that the sheriff rather, has now backtracked off of this uh, off of this order and has um, now come to the understanding that uh, that churches are in fact essential uh, uh, operations and organizations in a time of crisis. Well, look here's the here here's the bigger picture here. Uh, this is a complete overstep by the the government there in the state of Florida, which again, is run by Republicans. So it's not a Republican or a Democrat issue. Uh, stupid knows no bounds in politics these days. So clearly there was a constitutional violation. But the other side of this issue is, is Pastor Brown. We all know from what the medical experts are telling us, this is a highly contagious disease. And it is imperative on everyone in America, including and especially pastors, to protect their flocks and to make sure that they're not putting people inadvertently in harm's way. There are other cases across the nation as well, correct? There was an example here in New York City. There was a very a prominent Jewish rabbi who died from the COVID-19 virus. Uh, they had his funeral and um, many hundreds of Orthodox Jews gathered for the funeral. The NYPD sent patrol cars to break up the funeral. They literally blasted their sirens, blasted messages, warning people that they were violating uh, the rules about social distancing. And, and they broke up, or at least they tried to break up the funeral. This is simply unacceptable behavior. And again, I, I think every American citizen has an obligation to be prudent, uh, but they should not panic and they definitely should not violate other people's constitutional rights. Todd, we understand the importance of these COVID-19 guidelines and rules, but what is the greater concern with religious rights? Well, I've been saying from day one that the bigger problem here and the greater threat to America is not the COVID-19 virus, but it is in fact the attacks on our civil liberties. I wrote a book about this that came out in October called Culture Jihad. And when you look at what's happening in our nation right now, many of the things I predicted would happen in my book are now coming true. This is a very dangerous place for us to be right now. And you're already starting to hear people talk about America 2.0. What does America look like in a post virus world? And we're talking, they're already talking about taking away some of our rights, giving the government more power. These are very dangerous concepts. And whenever that happens, one of the first things that comes under attack is religious liberty. And honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why the first thing they decided to do was to crack down on corporate worship. They said, you know what, we're going to shut down the churches. You're not allowed to practice your religion in the public marketplace. Now you have to do it from inside your home. And then they took that a step further. What did they do in New York City? Mayor Bill de Blasio, a Democrat, said that any church or synagogue that refuses to shut its doors will be shut down permanently by the city of New York. That is flat out unconstitutional. It ought to be the lead story on every network newscast, and nobody's talking about it at all, except for CBN News. Also, Todd, there's a narrative, I understand, that evangelical Christians and something called muscular Christianity are in part to blame for the spread of the coronavirus? What's the story there? Yeah, leave it to the uh, mainstream media to somehow blame this virus on, on evangelical Christians. And again, this goes back to the attacks on the, the corporate worship. So uh, I'm not surprised to see these, these kinds of attacks out there. Uh, there has been this, this effort afoot to marginalize Christians uh, in this virus. For example, Vice President Mike Pence uh, was uh, was asked about this on ABC News just the other day about whether or not uh, he talks to God about the people that have been killed as a result of the virus. Very insulting question. You had Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy, who um, called on the nation there in the Rose Garden to turn back to God and to begin reading the Bible. And he was castigated, brutally castigated. And then go back to the early days of the virus, when you have the mainstream media attacking the vice president and the entire coronavirus task force simply for praying and seeking God's direction and wisdom on how to deal with, with the crisis. So this is nothing more than one of the run-of-the-mill attacks on religious liberty. And what the left is saying is that we don't want Christians to have a voice in America. They're telling Christians, shut up. Wow. Well, Todd Starnes, thanks for your insights. As always, we appreciate your time. Thanks for breaking these issues down for us. Still ahead, while practicing social distancing, uh, some church members managed to 
bring a unique Easter message celebration of our risen Savior. We're going to have that story when we come back. Stay with us. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? In Virginia's Hampton Roads area, a dozen churches put a unique twist on the traditional Easter message. George Thomas brings us a look at their high-flying approach. Just uh, follow the E. Some directed traffic. Back up, back up, back up, back up. And you're good. Others lined up each car just right as members of 12 Virginia churches rolled up with their masks on and maintaining strict social distancing guidelines to send the world an Easter message. In the middle of this pandemic, there's hope, that there's strength, and that we will make it through this. Because he has risen, so will we. On a stretch of road in Chesapeake, dozens of cars lined up to spell the words, He is risen. I think with as much desperation and anxiety going on in the world at this time, people are looking for hope, and it's a great opportunity for us to get out there and love our neighbors and share the love of Jesus with them. As the emotional and physical toll of the COVID-19 outbreak rises, folks here want their fellow Americans not to lose heart. God is with us. Oh that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is with us in this really terrible time. Pastor Bob Fox organized the event to encourage congregations to reach a hurting world during times of uncertainty. This is an opportunity for us to go forward, not just to be passive and just try to wait it out, but to really listen to the Lord. The Lord wants to use this time to take the church to, to new levels of expressing the gospel. And it's happening. Research shows a huge spike in online searches relating to faith, God, and the Bible since the viral outbreak started. We've seen big upticks in searches around fear and anxiety. We've also seen record levels of people sharing scripture. Fox says while this event is a symbolic gesture of unity. And also just to get out, take the gospel outside the walls. Since we can't get in the walls, we have to take it outside the walls. As the coronavirus pandemic continues to bear down across the globe, the drivers of these 49 cars are hoping that the words, He is risen, will bring hope in the midst of this historic season of fear, anxiety, and widespread isolation. George Thomas, CBN News, Chesapeake, Virginia. Coming up, a beautiful hymn to celebrate Christ this Good Friday and Easter weekend. Stay with us.
Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Time now for your Friday faithful, and as we mark and celebrate Good Friday, the day our Lord and Savior was crucified, leaving the world in darkness for hours. Remember this, God is still good. Even when situations and circumstances aren't good, He is good. And here's the best part. He is causing all things to work together for your good and for His glory. With that word, have a good Good Friday and a great Easter weekend. And in the spirit of this holy holiday, we want to leave you with a special hymn performed by a virtual choir. It was actually produced in 2018, but it's perfect viewing for today. It's an a cappella performance of Christ, In Christ Alone with 48 singers from 14 countries. You can also find it at our website, cbnnews.com. But here's just a portion of it. In Christ Alone. Oh. 